And the one thing I've noticed is that the more I mess with this, the more I'm showing this hard edge. So I'm just going to sort of bring this, this uh, plaster back over here to cover that hard edge up again. And I'm feeling pretty comfortable with that at this point. Okay, it's not too bad. I think that'll work fine, actually. So there we go. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Now the only thing is I want it to I want it to look like the snow is actually drifting up. So I'm going to strip it back that way. Being mindful. I've got these nice little almost waves of snow going right now where it looks like the snow is sort of blown over in waves like water. And that's pretty much what I want. I dab it a little bit with the tip there. It creates these nice little waves. And that's good. I'm going to throw just a couple little dabs up on top with my extra just to make it appear as though the snow has drifted over. There we go. And that also will create some texture, but it won't be too much. So it'll sort of blend it all together, get a little bit extra off of the brush. There we go. Okay, that one's good. I am satisfied with that. For this one over here, I'm not going to do as much because I don't want it to be a big problem. Uh, looking at this thing, I can see here that, uh, you know, here on the sides, there's really no room for Marines to stand over here, but there is room over here on this side. So I'm going to apply the snow drifts uh, over here um, on the sides, uh, over on this side. That way, you know, it's basically, it's not going to be useful anyway. I'm not going to be able to use that area. It's just too, it's just too narrow. Um, so that's where I'm going to, oh, this thing love to tip over. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so that's where I'm going to apply it, is over here on the side. Um, okay, hopefully that'll stand. So, we need to get some more plaster. That's pretty messy. We're going to smear this on the sides. Make sure you guys can see it. Now, I don't want it up there in the middle, really, because that is actually where I want my figures to stand. So I'm just going to apply it here on the side. So that will make it appear as though the snow has drifted on. Okay, good. That's nice. Not too thick, not too thin, just enough. Uh, put a little bit more right there. All right. Again, any hard edge you want to cover, this is a great way to do it because, and this doesn't work for everything. It does certainly work for these sort of snow projects. But if I was going to do, let's say, uh, a jungle board, it really wouldn't work for that. But I could use foliage to cover it up. Just remember, always think of the final product. You know. Okay. So now that I've got this on here, I'm going to start sort of massaging it into position with my hand. Just kind of get that in the general shape I want. Make it look like the snow has drifted in a little bit through this pass, I guess. Let's uh, go ahead and smear that over a little bit, cover it a bit. Now remember it's getting on the bottom a little bit, but that's okay, because remember in the end, we're just going to over it so that's all right okay so now I've got it in the basic position that I want that's not bad both versatile and fun I think maybe a little bit more up there wouldn't be the worst thing ever uh, waste not put this stuff on the brush clean off my fingers a little bit put this stuff off there. okay now I'm going to start to apply this in a ripple as we showed you on the other one Make it look like the snow has drifted up. There we go. Dab it a few times with the hard edge of the brush. Make sure that you get that sort of wave effect you want. I always feel like art like this is really more of a feel than a, uh, there's more art than science to it. Um, you know, you want if it feels right, then it's going to look okay, I think. And just remember, it looks like crap right now, but it won't in the end. Okay, so now on the top, I'm going to apply some of these drifts. Use a little bit more of this stuff. A little bit more drift. Drift a little bit, a little texture. And here in the middle, I'm going to sort of pull it in. Make it look like the snow is sort of, <clears throat> what do you call it, drifted through there. Like it's a canyon. There we go. 
Okay, and that's not so bad. Um, not perfect, of course, but it's not going to be perfect. It's just going to be uh, to the point where you're satisfied with it, and I am satisfied with it. So now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to leave this overnight to dry. When we come back tomorrow, this is going to be nice and dry. Uh, and then what we're going to do is apply our first coat of paint to this. Um, what we're going to do is, because I want that bluish underglow to this like snow would have, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a level of blue paint first, a darkish blue, um, and then maybe work up to a second layer of lighter blue, and then finally we're going to cover it with a white uh, as a top coat. Um, I could even use spray paint on this to sort of get a good base coat going. Um, now that'll degrade the foam, but that's okay because the reality is, hey, you know, it's okay if it's degraded a little bit um, because that's an all right look for this sort of project where you want it to be a little uneven. Um, but we'll look at that tomorrow. So uh, for now, let's just let it dry and I'll come back to you tomorrow and we'll see how it turns out. Okay. okay, it's a brand new day. It's perfect weather for painting outside. It's nice and warm and bright. Uh, so the last time that we uh, saw our hills, our snowy hills, they had just had their... Uh, or uh, patching plaster applied to them. It hadn't dried yet. I gave it a day to try dry or so. And this is, as you can see, how it came out. Um, the patching plaster is completely dry now. It's nice and it's uh, adhered to the side. Now, patching plaster is pretty fragile, so it will chip off over time. It's going to chip white, though, so that's not going to really hurt us. Um, as long as we take decent care of these, um, it'll be fine. Um, as I mentioned, you don't want to apply more than you need because it does tend to crack. If you look real close here beneath this hill it's a little hard to see um, but you'll start to notice there are some cracks here and those cracks are because it's spread out in a way that patching plaster really wasn't designed for it's designed to go straight and be sanded um, but overall this worked pretty well I think um, so now that it's nice and sunny outside what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint these with a power painter um, now a power painter is different than a spray gun or an air gun or an airbrush uh, because a power painter is simply uh, basically just what your parents used to spray their house or spray their deck or what a painter uses to paint in a hurry. Uh, it's just a, a very powerful paint gun uh, that uses um, elect electricity to, to pump the paint through it with an electrical charge instead of like an air gun where you use compressed air uh, or a, a Citadel spray gun where you use compressed air in a can. This just uses electricity so there's no fuel source you have to worry about. Um, they're pretty inexpensive to buy. Well, they're not terribly inexpensive. You can get one for about 50 or 60 bucks. Less than that, like 40 on eBay if you look around. Um, they do require a little maintenance to set up. Um, I went ahead and set mine up. I have a Wagner power painter, and I went ahead and mixed up some blue paint. Now, this is going to be white eventually, but I wanted an underlayer of blue beneath this uh, to sort of give that sort of snow, that cold blue look, uh, and then we're going to paint white over it. I went ahead and mixed some paint up, I went ahead and connected the gun, got it all set, and I went ahead and tested it just to make sure the paint was flowing. If the paint's not flowing well enough, you need to add some sort of additive to it. Um, I use Floetrol, which is basically just a, a, mixing, a mixer for paint to thin it out a little bit. You could probably also use Windex, uh, which is a, just a glass cleaner, or any glass cleaner really, uh, or rubbing alcohol would probably be okay too, but for the purpose of this, uh, this showing, I went ahead and used uh, what do you call it? Uh, Floetrol, which you can pick up for about six bucks a bottle and it'll last you quite a while. Um, this blue paint I picked up at my local hardware store. Um, I picked it up for next to nothing. Um, if you look in their painting section and you look for discounted paints, paints that people have had mixed up, that they haven't actually decided to keep, usually you can find really cheap paint. Uh, for example, I just looked for a generic blue. Someone had mixed up some blue for their house and they didn't really love the color. Um, since it was cheap, I bought it, and I can just simply use that for this sort of project. Uh, greens and browns are another good thing to get you know, for terrain building purposes. Um, now, the only disadvantage is you want to make sure you have enough to go through the entire project. Um, fortunately, I think I do. Um, if I don't, then I'll just buy some more paint later. Uh, but, you know, I think for the purpose of this project, it's going to be okay because I'm going to go over it with white anyway. Pretty heavy overbrush of white, so you're really not going to be able to see the blue much. It's just going to be sort of a tent from underneath. Um, and that's the beauty of layering is that we're not going to see the bottom layer, but the bottom layer contributes to the top layers. Um, okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run paint over these real quick. I'm in my backyard. Um, be sure to lay down some plastic. This gun does tend to get messy, so I'll go ahead and point the camera down so you can see what's going on.
Okay. And as you can see, the wind is trying to blow these hills, blow this plastic over. That's okay. You also want to put on some old clothes before you do this, because it will get messy. If the gun clogs, then I'll just stop the camera and, and uh, thin out the paint a little bit more, but it should be okay. So you just want to go over this very, very quickly and briefly. You don't want to spend a lot of time on it because you don't want this paint is very, very thick. So be sure to go in sweeping waves. Okay. Oh, that happens sometimes. It's not locked in all the way. It will do that. That's okay. Just click it back in. There we go. Out again. And then just move around it, get the other side. You can see it's kind of splattering a little bit. That's because I don't have this clicked in as firmly as it should. I'm not for sure exactly what's going on. We're just going to press on though. Clearly we're suffering a technical error, just hold on a second. Alright, I think we got it at least well enough for now. That's what's going on. I'm, I'm holding it in because it doesn't seem to want to lock. That's okay. You can see it's splattering a little bit, which is not what we want really, but because this is going to be an undercoat, it's going to be okay. So. So there we go. And in seconds of work, we've really achieved uh, what would have taken a good 20, 30 minutes uh, painting it by hand. Um, now that's on there pretty thick. You can see it pooling in a couple places, but it's outside. The wind's going to help to dry it, and it'll be dried probably in about 30 minutes or so. Uh, so that's not so bad. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will actually overbrush by hand. So now we can go ahead and disassemble our, our power painter. And be sure to clean it. Be sure to run some cleaning solution through it. Um, that way you won't clog up your gun. So I'm going to do that. But that's not exciting, so I'll do that off camera. Um, so for now, that's it. And I will come back when this is all dry, and we will do the overbrushing of the white. And we'll flock it. And uh, you can see there's some areas down there in the very bottom where obviously you need some touch-ups because there's some brown there. You can see the basing. That's okay because we'll go over that with the white. So it'll be all right. So we'll come back when this is ready for the next layer of paint. Um, so we've got our hills, and they are all painted up with the blue. Uh, we've put our, our um, spackle on here, our filler compound, and that has given us this nice sort of almost frosting-like texture to the front of these things here. It, it certainly, I feel like, looks like the snow has been sort of blowing inwards, um, you know, almost like a snow embankment that's slowly over time been being pushed back. Um, so we've got our blue on here, but obviously snow is not blue, it's white. So now what we want to do is we want to paint these so that they appear to be like snow. So what I've got is I've got a large bear, uh, large um, uh, uh, container of acrylic white. Um, it's a little hard to see because of the flare. Let me see if that makes it. There you go, that's a little bit better. So this paint is um, available at most hobby shops. You can get something like this for give or take about $3. You can get this at Michael's, you can get it at a Walmart or sundry stores like Target in their arts and crafts section. Um, you pay less for this because it's not nearly as nice a paint. Um, it, it's a lot cheaper because it, it doesn't work as well. But for something like Terrain, where you don't want to, to burn a lot of paint like GW quality paint, um, it's perfect. So what I've got is I've got my palette out here. I'm going to tilt the camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing. And uh, here we go. See if we can see this. Yeah, it's a little difficult, so I guess I have to manhand it. Okay, so we've got our palette here. Um, in this case, it's just a plastic styrofoam plate. I've put out some white paint. I've got my hill over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just 
uh, apply some of this paint on my brush. I'm gonna get a little bit of it off there, and I'm going to begin applying it. Now I'm using a fairly stiff bristled, bristled brush here, um, not because of the stiffness of the bristles. In fact, I think I would prefer a softer brush, but I'm using this one because of how wide it is. I like the wideness. Um, it covers a lot more area. I'm going to be able to get this on here much, much faster. Um, and realistically, I'm just trying to, uh, basically, I'm overbrushing is. Now, dry brushing is different than overbrushing in that with a dry brush, you're trying to get that, that brush so dry that you're really applying almost a dusting uh, across the surface of a model. Um, with overbrushing, it doesn't matter if your brush gets wet or not. You're still just trying to catch the tops of things. Um, so this is more of an overbrush than a dry brush. My end goal here is to have some of the blue coming through but mostly white. So I'm going to continue this until I get it covered to the point that I am satisfied with. And I will bring you back in a few minutes when I've got that done rather than have you sit here and watch me do all this. Um, and I'll, we'll show you how it turns out. Hey okay, guys, um, so I've got uh, the finished hills with the paint on them. So here we are. Um, so at this point, the paint has been applied. It's actually still wet, which is why I want to go ahead and shoot this video now. Um, I've applied a heavy overbrushing of white to both hills. So there's still a good amount of blue coming through um, uh, on the hill currently. But it's mostly white, and certainly all of this sort of frosting-like material over here on the side is, is very white. Um, now while it's still white, we're going to go ahead and apply yet another texture to this and finish it out. This is an old Parmesan cheese container. Um, that uh, I washed in the dishwasher, and it is filled uh, with baking soda. You can get baking soda at uh, most uh, grocery stores for about a dollar or so, maybe even 79 cents, so not a significant amount of money. Um, and Parmesan cheese, you can get a, a container simply by waiting um, until you, you and your family has enough spaghetti, uh, they've eaten enough cheese, and the container is empty. Um, spice containers work really well for this too. Just hold on to old spice containers or old Parmesan cheese containers. Now they're not dishwasher safe, which is why this duct tape is on here because the top of this distorted just enough that I couldn't screw the cap on anymore. So uh, what I've done is I've put this baking soda into this Parmesan cheese container. I have two different sifters on top. I have one for scooping and I have one just for sifting. Um, I have put my hills on this old uh, tray. Uh, this is actually a tray that we used to use for um, plastic containers like um, for storing extra clothes and gifts and you know knickknacks and stuff um, and if you look at how much comes out it, it, this is really perfect for um, for flocking so using my um, my homemade flocking container um, with my um, baking soda while the paint while the glue is still wet what I'm going to do is just very very lightly flock some of this material onto it and what that's going to do is that's going to create a snowy like texture on this um, you don't have to go crazy just just enough to sort of dust the top of it and while the paint is still wet this is ideal because then you're not wasting uh, glue later you can be a little liberal with it um, really all you're trying to do is just create another texture on there so we're going to be kind of liberal with it. There we go. Sprinkle this on. Get this on nice. Okay, it's probably a little too heavy there. All right, so now we've got plenty of a little bit more. Be bold, man. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dust these off. Get that extra off of there. And when they're completely dry, we'll be able to uh, get the rest of this flocking material and put it back into the container. And this is going to end up being our finished product. This is these three layered tiered hills. They've got the blue underneath, the top layer of white, and now they have this dusting of flocking material on top. If I really wanted to further cement that, what I could do is I could um, uh, take a, a some um, spray, spray, um, what do you call it, um, glaze medium, and cover this up to sort of give it that snow-like sheen and shine to it. Um, or while this flocking material is still wet, I could take some, um, uh, some sort of foot, like a soldier's foot, and add that to it. In fact, I've got these, uh, this old stamp over here that I use for this sort of thing. I have an old plastic toy wolf that I keep around, and I could take this if I wanted to, and I could 
create some wolfy footprints on this thing to make it look like a wolf had been trekking around. Let's see if we can see anything. Well, not really, but there's some. Oh, there it is. You can, if you look real close, you can see some evidence of it. Let's throw some up here too. And that way when that dries, we'll have some nice little wolf footprints up there. A couple more. There we go. Okay, good. So that's it. Two hills, uh, give or take less than about $10 for the total set. Um, certainly didn't take that much time. Um, and they look nice. They're original looking. And they've got plenty of space for models to stand on. These will be both versatile and fun to use in game. So that's our first terrain set for our snowboard. I'll... Uh, catch you on the second terrain set what we'll be doing next and um you know again we're gonna our, our goal is to do 10 terrain sets for less than ten dollars a piece total so a hundred dollars to completely cover your table uh, by handmade terrain um, something we can be proud of and will look good too so that's it until next time um happy wargaming work on some terrain and uh we'll see you then